Welcome back to the channel. Last year, Marvel Comics launched Timeless from Jed McKay, and it was actually a pretty decent story. It was just kind of hitting at the future of Marvel Comics in 2022. Obviously, we're over that. Kang essentially played no role in Marvel Comics in 2022. It felt like he was supposed to be being built up for something this year that didn't happen. So we're getting another Kang Timeless story setting up 2023, and we get a bunch of teases as to what is going on with Kang. Apparently, he's got a new arch rival. There's a moment missing and all that kind of stuff. And here to talk to me about that is the Marvel Comics aficionado himself. How you doing, Doc? Oh, I am here, sir. And I feel like I fell into a fucking time warp. This is what they had to say. Timeless number one returns for 2022 on December 28th with a story by Jed McKay with art by Salvador La Roca, Greg Land, and Pat Zercher. The last battle of Kang the Conqueror, tyrant of the timeline, master of endless legions, Warrior and conqueror without compare, Kang is in search of the one thing he could not have, but he is not the only one after the missing moment, and Kang soon finds himself in a new position on the run across the events of the Marvel Universe's future. So we've got this big missing moment that's being set up, and this new arch villain, and apparently Kang is going to be on the run this time, Doc. I thought he was, you know, so powerful you couldn't really fight him. Yeah, the idea of making Kang the character that's on the run kind of undermines the entire i guess goals that the mcu is doing with or and marvel in general with trying to do some sort of synergy between movies and the comics by making kang be center stage in the the upcoming series so they're kind of undermining it by putting kang on the run I guess, ostensibly making him kind of sympathetic. Also, simultaneously trying to build him up as the big bad of the MCU and work that Marvel synergy. Now, it's like every other time. Oh, hey, look, this thing that I'm interested in from the movies, and then I go to the comics, and it's nothing fucking alike. Well, that does seem to be a Marvel Comics uh, strategy with the characters and stuff like that. Doesn't seem to work out as far as the synergy goes, but we did get these big teases. As to what is coming up for Kang in this comic book, introducing several mysteries. The first two ask about the big missing moment. The second teaser actually references the missing moment and suggests this affects Luke Cage, a black and red Spider-Man, Bishop in Surge, and quotes Kang as saying, Have I reached my limits? Is this the point where I cease to be Kang and begin to be Immortus? We haven't really heard about Immortus like since the 1960s, Doc. Well, I mean, you you kind of got him a little bit in the 90s, but it's, it, yeah, it has been quite a while since Immortus, I guess you could say the next step of Kang, because he is multiple people throughout the Marvel, you know, continuity and timeline. It would be interesting to kind of see a last Kang story where he kind of, I guess, metamorphosizes into his next incarnation being Immortus. Why in the hell are they doing it at the same time that they're going to build him up as a big bad? Well, let's not worry about the movies, Doc. Let's worry about the comic books. He's becoming Immortus. We see Bishop in there. That kind of makes sense because he's going to be spanning the Marvel Comics timeline. He's also a time traveler. But we're seeing the black and red Spider-Man suit here. The original design for that black Spider-Man suit. They did away with the red because it was too menacing. This kind of seems maybe exciting. Do you think they can do anything interesting with that? I actually do think they could do something original. It would at least be interesting. I'm wondering whether or not it's like a Peter Parker King in Black from some part of the far-flung future. Either way, it's it's at least interesting, and there's at least a interesting callback. The thing I'm confused at is, you know, if you're going to have a mutant time traveler in here why bishop why not cable he only really goes back and forth between like two different eras and even then he doesn't really go back to his future very often not really but he is trying to affect time which seems to be kind of the premise of what's going on with king, king the conqueror here because he's lost a moment in time which apparently has affected his future and what he end up becoming maybe Maybe that moment has something to do with Bishop and Surge and, you know, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens with the missing moment. That seems to be the key premise of what this story is and what it's leading into with the Marvel Comics universe. We got another teaser that asks, who is Kang's mysterious new arch rival, Mirden, and likely quotes Mirden, the character saying, 
Is that why you haven't understood the main aspect of the missing moment or of the tribulation events themselves? I don't know why Kang needs an arch rival. He's already a big bad, but apparently Mirden is here. And this is the character that he's going to be competing with. Find this missing moment. And they're talking about the tribulation events. That sounds like they're going biblical on our asses, Doc. I feel like we're back in uh, solemn territory with uh, Marvel editorial trying to tell us who the new arch nemesis of a character is instead of letting it happen organically, especially if they are going to connect to Immortus and it will be his, you know, uh, metamorphosis into Immortus incarnation, you know, going biblical would make sense considering that Immortus was a pharaoh. So, and tribulation events are kind of tied into the book of revelations and all that stuff. Absolutely. That would make some degree of sense whether or not this editorial department is smart enough to make those connections. We shall wait and see. Well, if you look at the character design, there's not a whole lot going there. You really can't see the face. There are a couple of ornaments on the, um, I guess, the outfit that the character is wearing. The only thing of interest, I guess, is it looks to be a sky that the character is carrying. Perhaps it's some type of Reaper or something. Yeah. Um, but it's another one of those oh, not intimidating villains that just has a very mysterious and dark design. Okay, maybe, but they all generally kind of look alike. So there's nothing unique about this design so far that really piques my interest. The final teaser that we'll talk about, I think, is maybe the most interesting. We certainly get the most information here. The final teaser asked, who are the Twilight Court? It appears we have some Shi'ar uh, representation from the Shi'ar Empire, possibly some time travel suits in a mysterious organization that are likely keeping the missing moment from Kang. Could this be a secret organization sworn to protect the missing moment from Kang and Mirden at all costs? That's certainly a plot point we've seen across mediums at this point, Doc. Yeah, um, especially after the Loki show, it wouldn't be surprising to find out that this is like some portion of like the time variance authority that's like an offshoot of that. Uh, obviously, they're definitely set up to be the thorn in Kang's side over his little adventure to go and collect this this moment that I guess he's forgotten about. They certainly go back to the Illuminati well a little too often for my taste. There's always like this dark, mysterious organization that's behind everything. Although I don't know that these guys are specifically going to be a Thord and King side. I imagine in the end, they'll end up helping him out once they figure out, figure out that Mirden is really the bad guy here. Because my assumption is these guys are going to be like the keepers of the secret moment that isn't missing from Kang that was actually taken from him for a specific reason. Maybe so he can't become Immortus possibly um you know maybe it's it's some way of them fucking with time in order to prevent something that's already happened from happening so they you know once you get into time travel shenanigans the question of like you know cause and effect kind of goes out the window you know you, you can affect the thing that already happened by changing the thing that hasn't happened yet and maybe their goal is to eliminate kang from from the timeline and let him you know not go to his next form we're getting a second issue of timeless setting up 2023 from marvel comics we'll certainly get a lot of teases as to what they're going to do in x-men spider-man avengers all that kind of stuff across the marvel comic book universe but once again they're flagging that kang is going to be a big deal in 2023 it did not come to fruition in 2022 he was essentially persona non grata in marvel comics despite timeless last year before that al ewing actually did a preview comic that i think they charged eight bucks and apparently the masked rider in the eternity mask were going to be enormous things in marvel comics in 2021 and that never came to fruition either doc so make of it what you will that doesn't mean that kang's going to be important yeah last year his only real connection to the timeless event was like a couple of pages in venom everything else was pointless at this point, stop buying these stupid $8, $6, $7 preview books. These should be giveaway books. And all you people out there that keep paying for them, you're the reason why that they're not preview books. They're not free giveaway books anymore. If you just can't get enough of thinking critical and you're waiting for the best video I've ever made specifically for you, YouTube has looked at what you like to watch and what I've created and said this 
is the perfect video I've ever created in my existence, over 2,000 videos in total, and I made it just for you. Definitely check this one out if you want some more. Thinking Critical YouTube.